Let's make history. The territory which would become the neighborhood of Spite and Dival was a Native American fishing community called Shorakapak for many, many years. When the Dutch arrived, they named the creek, which is the water sandwich between Northern Manhattan and the Bronx, they named it Spite and Dival, which is a Dutch phrase that translates to sprouting devil. And that was due to the savage tides and wild waters there. I mentioned on some of my videos on this area, ships had a difficult time crossing from the Hudson River over to the Harlem River. And this is how Spite and Dival got its name. In the late 1600s, Frederick Phillips of Yonkers built the King's Bridge connecting Manhattan, Upper Manhattan with the Bronx, which was then part of Westchester County. And he did charge a toll on that bridge, which caused a crew of other bridges to spring up, which didn't charge tolls, but that's a topic of another discussion. In the late 1800s, Manhattanites were granted access to upstate New York via a railroad, which was established from Grand Central Station going up into Spite and Dival and up into upstate New York, Albany, Schenectady, etc. As a result, the area flourished. Today, it still uses the same route and is known as the Metro North. In the early 1900s, many tall apartment buildings were built, which became condominiums. In the 1930s, they saw the building of Henry Hudson Park, which has a Henry Hudson statue, which is enormous, and it rises high above the trees, looking out over the creek. As of today, in the 21st century, the Spite and Dyville district is predominantly white and made up of mostly homeowners, and some people consider it not even its own neighborhood, but merely a subsection of Riverdale, Southside Riverdale. Speaking of the Metro North, there was a major derailment there uh, in about 2013, where due to excessive speed along one of the curves along the train's route, four people died, many people were injured, it was all over the news at the time. I remember this. What caused that deadly train, train crash in New York? Investigators say it was dangerously speeding down the tracks at 82 miles per hour into a curve when it flew off the rails. Right now, the key question for the train's engineer, what exactly was he doing right before that crash that injured more than 60 and killed four? This morning, investigators are looking closely at the train's excessive speed, 82 miles per hour, nearly three times the speed permitted through that upcoming turn. Sources tell ABC News human error was likely the cause of the crash. Investigators are examining the engineer's cell phone to determine if he was distracted. The train had left Poughkeepsie in the early morning hours Sunday. Just after 7 a.m., the train was in the Bronx area. The speed limit for trains here is 70 miles per hour. But at the curve where the derailment occurred, the speed limit drops to 30 miles per hour at 82 miles per hour, with the emergency brakes only activating seconds before the derailment the train had no time to slow down. Investigators now examining those brakes. It was only six seconds before everything came to a stop that the throttle went to idle. The train did make nine stops before coming to this curve. So clearly the brakes were working a short time before the train uh, came to this curve. Overnight, a vigil for those four people who lost their lives. James Ferrari heading to work as a building supervisor. Anne Kasuk heading home from her night shift as a nurse. Donna Smith on her way to see her sister's choral performance. And James Lovell, that sound engineer from NBC, taking the early train to help stage the lighting of the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. He was just the best father I could ever ask for, always supportive. This as the nation's eyes turn to other train accidents around the world. A crash this July in Spain that killed 80 people also could be blamed at speeding at a curve. That engineer texting at the time of the crash. Let me know what you think in the comments. Subscribe to Will Flores TV on YouTube. Follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and X.